psych major psychologists of reddit what are some of the creepiest mental conditions you have ever encountered i was in a psych ward for depression and my roommate was terrifying she was schizophrenic depressed and also probably just weird she punched herself in the face constantly while whispering to the voices in her head she also used to sit in the multi-purpose room tv games fridge etc on the floor and masturbate like a lot but she never stopped whispering to herself while she did it i woke up to pee one night and she was just in her bed staring blankly at me she was moved to a long-term facility on my third day there the worst thing i've actually encountered in terms of creepy was a little developing sociopath he had history fire animals freaking and was apparently high in cu trays he was about 11 when I first met him, so no one was going to call him ASPD or anything, but that's what he looked like he was growing into. Anyway, the kid is incredibly funny, smart, and charming. No one can believe what his previous school and doctors were saying about him. I was new there, so I was taken in as well. Then, one day he gets in trouble for stealing, and we had the proof on camera, but he didn't know that. I'm sitting in as a witness security while he's going through this whole series of emotions, surprise, indignation, fear, anger, etc as he pretends he has no idea why he's being accused. Then we show the tape and he just stops dead, blank expression, and says something to the effect of, so what, you were just wasting my freaking time? It was another voice. A completely different personality coming out of this kid like you flipped a switch. I've seen some crap, but that moment was creepy as heck. I've never heard of anything more psychologically incredible than a fugue state, when the mind can't deal with reality, so it just creates an entire new world for itself to live in. Reactive Attachment Disorder I worked at a group home for kids with this disorder and it was creepy before I fully understood it. But children who have suffered severe abuse and neglect early in life often have their ability to form healthy attachments to caregivers, or anyone, destroyed. Some of them would cling to me, call me mommy, and beg to come home with me 30 seconds after I met them. Others would refuse to talk to anyone, hurt themselves and others, set fires and act out any chance they could. Sometimes they would improve enough to be sent to foster homes only to have their behavior come back worse once they were placed in an unstructured family setting. It's extremely tragic because there is basically no hope of a cure and they will have the disorder the rest of their lives. I live with a long time friend who I am convinced is developing has developed disorganized schizophrenia over the past 3 years. It's not as crazy or mind blowing as some of the other ones on this thread. But it is truly freaking up his life and making it exponentially harder for me to tolerate him on a daily basis. More bizarre than anything. In the past couple of months, especially, he has exhibited extremely antisocial and disorganized behavior. Everything from inappropriate emotional reactions to regular life events, to an inability to form complete sentences or thoughts in a conversation, to just plain old freaking around with people by not making any sense. Sometimes on purpose and sometimes unknowingly. He used to be an extremely personable guy, who could approach anyone and make friends. Now he literally can't hold a conversation, but still wants to be really approachable and personable, but doesn't realize that he actually creeps people out so much that they will passionately avoid talking to him again. The most frustrating thing that he does is basically attaches to me whenever I'm at home. He will stand at my bedroom door and watch me do my homework, fold my laundry, clean my room, work on my computer, build legos, etc. And he will always be in the same room as I am unless I have shut my bedroom door. He mimics my actions, wakes up whenever I do, goes to sleep whenever I do, always wants to cook or clean whenever I am. I essentially have to find things that he can't or doesn't know how to do to get some freedom. It's mostly me because I've known him for way longer than my roommates. But when I'm not home, he does all of this to them too. I think this all stems from his inability to make basic decisions, like when to eat, or where to study, or when to leave in order to be on time for something. This extends to almost every aspect of his life. I've been seeing a counselor to consult with her about it, but it's basically impossible to know anything for sure because she can't tell me any information about him or his visits. He started going as well. I don't know if he goes to them unless I ask him. 
and there's not telling when he will forget about a session or just decide not to go to a doctor's evaluation. It's even more frustrating that this counselor keeps telling me that I shouldn't keep reminding him of these things or keeping tabs on him, because eventually I will be like a mother taking care of an infant child. My words not hers, and she is right, but it is upsetting. Weirdest part, he's studying behavioral neuroscience. TL. DR. I've been friends with my roommate for over a decade. In the past 3 years he has developed disorganized schizophrenia right in front of my eyes and there's nothing I can do about it. He's echoing, repeating your behaviors and actions as a way to cope. Some will do it in conversations as well. Latching onto a phrase of importance and repeating it, the rain is really bad today yeah that rain is bad. It's a sign of cognitive impairment. Your story is sad. Nurse here. First patient that thought she was the devil scared the crap out of me. You get used to people who also think they're the devil and become numb to all the weird crap they do. I'm a psych major so not a professional but in my opinion it is catatonic schizophrenia. Those suffering from this type of schizophrenia, although in the DSMV they are getting rid of the different types of schizophrenia, there will just be one classification, will sometimes be unable to speak or move. My professor worked in a clinic while in school and told us of one patient who would suddenly lock up into extremely awkward position and not move for extended periods of time. This used to happen to a friend of mine. He passed away 3 years ago, and it was absolutely freaking terrifying. The first time it happened, we had no idea what to do, so we just called an ambulance. I am a paranoid schizophrenic. I don't believe there is anything scarier on the planet than an episode. Nothing is more terrifying than being betrayed by your own mind. The things you hear and see, it's awful. I'm not a psychologist, but I was in a mental institution for attempt suicide. Lots of bad things had happened to lead me to that choice. Please don't judge. But, as I was saying, there was this girl there, named Anna, and she would comb her hair in the morning and talk to herself. Sometimes she would start to violently scream at herself. One time she grabbed her hair as if it wasn't her pulling it, and forcefully bashed her head repeatedly into the mirror screaming, Love Emmy, love Emmy and at night she would start to play with herself and scream her father's name. I have never been so scared in my life. This girl Anna, was only 15. Her father would violate, and abuse her. The mother was beaten also. I never want to relive that ever again. This is just sad. Her bastard of a father ruined her life at such a young age. I can only imagine the horrors she went through that brought her to that state. The selfish love obsession of a teen with severe borderline personality disorder. This girl got hold of a razor and carved a boy's name. Let's call him Steve. 10 times into various parts of her body. Then she had fricked another boy so that she could get pregnant. Have an abortion. Tell her friends that the child was Steve's. And that Steve had pressured her to have the abortion. All this time she had been spying nightly on Steve. Had fake installed cameras in his house while he wasn't there to make sure he wasn't dating anyone else. And had introduced herself to every one of Steve's close family members as Steve's girlfriend. While Steve wasn't around. The kicker. Steve didn't know this girl. He vaguely recalled meeting her once, but didn't know her name until I sought him out. He knew someone was pretending to be his girlfriend, but didn't know who. I'm a psychology major, but this story does not have to do with my schooling. To put myself through school I work as a receptionist at a swimming pool and Thursday is the day when individuals with disabilities and mental disorders come to the pool with their workers. I was on the other side of the counter helping the individuals into the change rooms and one of the clients grabbed my hair and started screaming at me that it was too beautiful and she needed to take it. One of the single most upsetting moments of my life because after her worker managed to get her to relinquish my hair she continued to just scream wordlessly until I was no longer in her sight. Wife is a psychologist. She says shared delusional disorder. Woman and her mother had paranoid delusions about mom's ex-husband and were convinced he was stalking them and breaking into their house. The ex had gotten the woman's son, aged 6, a modeling contract, and they thought that every picture of a kid in a magazine was him. The images that didn't look like him they claimed were photoshopped. This was so weird and creepy since two people shared the same delusions. 
not a psychologist, but there's a condition where people believe their life is like the Truman Show and that nothing in their life is real. I think that's creepy because there's no way to convince them that they're not part of a TV show. Yay. This happened to my ex-boyfriend. Not exactly that it was a TV show but still thought everyone in the entire world was watching him. Really scary stuff. When I was younger I was a pretty unstable kid, which led to multiple stays in a youth psych ward. One of the times I was in, we got a boy who looked like a 14 year old fatter, paler, creepier, Jack White. So we find out that he threatened to kill and eat his school principal, which even to a bunch of suicidal teens, was psycho as freak. I slightly felt bad for him, because obviously he was messed up in the head, way more than us at least. But he would say all of these awkward things trying to be funny that ended up sounding like serial killer quotes. Like do you ever wonder what it feels like to be dead eat someone which especially to the girls, was freaky as freak. So after my roommate gets out, I hear Hannibal Lecter is moving into my room. It's weird, but I just brush it off. I was 250 pounds 5'10 and he was just him. So a few nights go by, nothing weird. And every once in a while when he made a fricked up joke they would pull him aside and tell him to chill out. But one day, I don't see him and one of the doctors calls me in. They tell me he is in his own room in solitary now. They pull out his notebooks and it is filled of his drawings of me while I sleep. Fantasy drawings of him fricking me, killing me, eating me, and pages of ramblings on how he would frick me or how I would taste. It is literally the entire notebook front to back filled with these drawings and writings. I am so petrified that I don't talk or leave my room for days. He apparently got sent to a long term center far away. But I ended up staying even longer since they thought I would kill myself over that. But that's the story. Never saw or heard from him again. Still think about it all the time. It's hard to sleep around other people anymore. It's not a disorder, but I've always found sleep paralysis really creepy. A friend of mine suffers from it. It's often an old woman sitting on him or near him. The hallucination can be so realistic that he can feel her breath on the back of his neck. I've been in my fair share of psyche wards and once I woke up to a guy jacking off over me. Thank god he didn't finish. I try not to think back too much. I was a preschool teacher in college. One year one of my students was a 5 year old girl who came to my after school class who enrolled mid semester after was taken into foster care. It was discovered that her father would bring home women and violate them in front of her. The bastard would tie her to the bedpost at the foot of the bed and use duct tape to hold her head up so she had to watch. He did this so many times over the course of 2 years that a bald spot eventually formed on the crown of her head. And when she came to my classroom for the first time she came up to me and said hello. She kept her head tilted down so she had to strain her eyes to look up at me as if she was still stuck to the bedpost. This is how she spoke to people the entire school year. She pulled out her hair when it grew back to keep the bald spot there. After that semester I resigned from the school and changed my major. I was once in a party and joined this group of people of which I knew just one person. He introduced me to the others one by one and when I arrived at the least one, Noah. I shook his hand and petted his shoulder. He grabbed my arm and flipped it around and almost snapped it. Needless to say it was the most awkward situation in my life and even thinking about it makes me cringe my teeth. I learned that Noah had been in Afghanistan and he freaked out when something or someone touched him from his back. My mom worked as a child art therapist for a long time. I looked at some of the artwork from abused kids and it's equal parts creepy and horrible. Most were self portraits of the kids attacking or killing their abusers, but some were about suicide. From kids under 5 years old, one crayon drawing made by a 6 year old stuck out to me. It showed a kid standing on top of a building with a speech bubble saying I'm going to jump while at the bottom of the building were his parents begging him not to. But on a better note, the more interesting ones were from kids with disorders needing medication. The kid would be asked to draw a person before and after they took the medication. The before pictures were essentially scribbles, all random, and after was a well defined stick man. My favorite is dissociative fugue. It's incredibly rare. Essentially what happens is one day, your mind goes blank and you move. Once you've reached a location you start building a new life for yourself. New name and everything. If questioned about your old life you either get very upset or brush it off and when asked about your past as a member of your new life, 
you have nothing to say. Eventually, after months or years, your mind snaps again and you return home to relive your original life, unaware it happened. It's usually brought on through stressful trauma. I worked as a case manager in a psych ward and was sworn into Superior Court 3 which dealt with kids being removed from the home along with various other juvenile cases. The worst I got from my boss in the court was a 15 yo psych case. Boy was removed from the home of his single mom and two little sisters. He had obvious control issues. Almost seemed mentally retarded. Learning more about him, he was incredibly manipulative. He could manage to get other people to do all sorts of things, then snap back into the almost retarded innocent person. I knew his mom wanted him in a full psych ward, and that precipitated his removal. After a long couple months of constant trips to juvie and to his community living area I was questioning him about his statement that mom doesn't want me anymore. I asked him that couldn't possibly be true. What makes you think that he turned cold as day? Voice changed. Eyes flared stared right into my eyes and said in a deep voice because I violated her. I was taken aback. After consulting the court and having the whole family go to a new psychiatrist and more educated therapists it came out that not only was this true, but he had violated his two little sisters in the past multiple times. His mom only once before the cops were called and he was removed, although at the time we didn't know that was why he was removed. When the cops came he was acting out and violent already. So he was removed on that basis. He later had to be moved to a more intensive facility. Between that and the crappy pay between two jobs that were crazy hard I decided to go back to school. When I was in a mental hospital, depression and suicidal thoughts, there was this woman there. Probably early to mid 20s I guess. She seemed kind of stable, if a little quiet and distant most of the time. But then you would see her curled up in the corner somewhere clutching a pillow tightly against her chest, rocking back and forth, singing nursery rhymes to this pillow. Sometimes, when she didn't have the pillow, or something else to hold onto, she would freak out and start screaming that someone had stolen her baby. Even if they gave her a pillow or something to hold onto, she would keep freaking out and they'd have to sedate her. I also once saw her trying to feed the pillow. Comma poor woman. Maybe something tragic happened and her baby got kidnapped or died. Not a doctor or anything, but there was a girl in my neighborhood when I was a teenager who was seriously fricked in the head. This little girl was probably only about 10 or 11 years old, and she was absolutely goddamn terrifying. I don't mean to be mean, since I'm sure she had a legitimate mental disorder, but holy frick was she terrifying. She would often wander around the neighborhood alone. I have no idea what her parents were doing and why they would let such an obviously unstable child just walk around. She did a number of severely creepy things including, but not limited to, sit on the ground, sometimes staring at walls and talk and laugh quietly to herself, say random things out of the blow to you even if you weren't talking to her. Sometimes there would be innocent things like okay, let's do that, but sometimes she would say strange nonsense like why 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 I'll tree green run, not something she actually said, just an example of the randomness. But she would say it as though she was talking directly to you, like it was a completely normal conversation. I'd heard her have actual conversations so I don't think she was just like, rambling random words because she didn't know how to form sentences or something. She would randomly stomp at the ground, or even smack it with her hands. She would touch things, like, run her hand up and down a wall for minutes on end, like, as if there was something special about the wall. She did this with the ground. Trees, objects, all sorts of stuff. She always had this really creepy happy demeanor. She was always smiling and giggling for no good reason. Even when she would stomp and stuff, she looked like she was having a fantastic time. I haven't even gotten to the worst parts yet. You know, like the time when she killed a freaking squirrel with a baseball bat and tried to give it to one of my neighbors, calling it a present. Or the time when she grabbed a butterfly and crushed it in her hands. Or when she pushed my little brother into an ant pile for absolutely no reason. Literally, she was just standing there. He walked past her and she just grabbed him and threw him into the ant pile, laughing as she did it. And what was the last straw? She actually tried to kill one of our neighbors. No, really. She somehow got a hold of a sharp knife, knocked on this old woman's door and tried to freaking stab her. Luckily the old woman reacted quickly and managed to wrestle the knife away from her and called the police. 
I'm not sure what exactly happened to her after that, but I know within days her and her parents had moved out. Plot twist. She is your delusion. Psych major here, and this is not exactly creepy, but visual neglect patients are really cool. They have perfectly functioning eyesight and it gets to the brain, but they can't focus on an entire field of vision. This doesn't really sound too weird, but consider this for a second. You cover this guy's right eye so all he can see is the stuff he can pay attention to. You throw a baseball at him, he will flinch and react, maybe even catch it in reflex, but he won't even realize it's there. You give him a plate of food, and he will leave everything on the left side of his vision and touch on his plate, but eat the rest. There was actually a study done on one of these patients where they asked him to picture himself standing on one end of a courtyard he was really familiar with, and draw everything he sees. He will only draw the buildings on the right side, but if you tell him to imagine standing at the other end looking in the opposite direction he will draw what is now on his right side, the buildings he left out of the picture before. I just think this is really cool and totally weird. I used to work at a school for severely autistic children. Now this particular story I didn't personally experience. Since being male I was not allowed to work with female students, but given some of the other things I experienced there I believe it completely. It involves this female student. I don't remember the age, who was high functioning enough to where she was able to verbally communicate. For whatever reason she was put into timeout, usually due to behavioral issues. It's just a room where we separate them from the other student staff if they get particularly aggressive. This usually only lasts for a few minutes till they calm down. Never really more than 10 minutes and if we see that they are causing further harm to themselves and there we immediately intervene. And in the timeout room she proceeded to uh, poop. She then picked up the poop and started cradling it. Like a baby. Then she said look John. It's a baby. Hint. No one knew who John was. Then she dropped it on the floor. Looked up and said oh no John. The baby is dead. Yeah. I got lots of awesome stories from that place. Been a tech in psych hospitals since I was 19. And I'm working on my RN to become a third generation crisis psych nurse. My patients are required to be actively either suicidal or homicidal to be admitted. And I have had patients as young as 4. I have been stabbed in the eye with frozen turds, lactated on by a man, and been assaulted so many times I stopped complaining about it to my girlfriend when I got home from work. The thing that really creeps me out was a man who claimed to be a prophet of Allah, proceeded accurately predict the exact discharge dates of every other patient on the ward, before the discharge orders had been written or decided on. My universe got a little bigger that day. The next time I'm having a bad day at work. I will immediately remember that I'm not being stabbed in the eye with a frozen turd shiv by a psycho. So thanks for that. I'm a psychology major and the weirdest stories come from my professors who often studied sociopaths and psychopaths in prison. This one guy was a sociopath and started early. When he was 7 years old he had a puppy that he loved very much. An older neighbor of his accidentally ran over the puppy with his truck and killed it. The boy was very angry so he went to the top of an overpass with a cement block and as the man with the truck drove under, the boy pushed the cement block over the edge and it fell, smashed through the windshield, and killed the old man instantly. He never felt any remorse for it and even chuckled at how silly he was as a little boy. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.